All right, this is the grade 11, November 2019 acids and bases question. It says, consider the balanced equations for the reaction of water with nitric acid and ammonia below. So in reaction one, nitric acid reacts with water to form a hydronium ion and a nitrate ion. And in reaction two, ammonia and water give you the ammonium ion and the hydroxide ion. Then it says, define an acid in terms of the lowery bronsted theory. So here it is, an acid is a proton donor. Okay, remember sometimes they can say, ask what is a base? A base is a proton acceptor. And remember sometimes they can ask you about Mr. Arrhenius's uh, definition as well, where it's the formation of hydroxide ions, etc. for bases. Okay, now it says, write down the formula of one conjugate acid-base pair in reaction one. So a conjugate acid-base pair is an acid will go to a conjugate base plus a proton or a base plus a proton goes to the conjugate acid. So the trick is here is you need two things and the only thing that is different about the two things is this proton. You have to have something that can lose a proton or something that can gain a proton. So if you have a look here in the first reaction, you can have the nitric acid, it's reaction one. The nitric acid will go to its conjugate base plus a proton. So we can write the proton first if it makes you happier. And there is the conjugate base. So here's the proton, here's the acid that donated the proton, and here is the conjugate base. So the conjugate acid base pair are nitric acid and the nitrate ion. My other option here is the water. So here is water and on the other side of the equation the water is the hydronium ion H3O plus. So here the water has accepted a proton. So this is a proton acceptor is a base. Here is a base, here is the proton, and here is the conjugate acid. So in this case, my conjugate acid base pair is H2O and H3O+. So these are the two possible answers for that question. There are two things that differ only by an H plus ion. Now it says to you, is the solution formed in reaction one acidic or basic? Give a reason for the answer. Well, look on the products here. I've got a hydronium ion. So this must be an acid because the hydronium ion is formed. And remember, this is the alternate sort of thing for a proton. When we talk about a proton, it's actually really more a hydronium ion. And if we form protons, then um, we are an acid. Then it says, define the term amphalite. An amphalite, you can see the definition over here. An amphalite is a substance that can act as either an acid or a base. So now it says, which substance is acting as an amphalite in the reactions above? Now, nine times out of ten, the answer to the question, what's the amphalite, is either going to be our friend water or if we have a polyprotic acid dissociating, one of the steps of the polyprotic acid will be an amphalite. But if you look in reaction one, okay, let's make the pen here. In reaction one, water goes to the hydronium ion, which means it must have accepted a proton. If we look in the second reaction, I've got water on the left-hand side and a hydroxide ion on the right hand side. So the water splits into a proton and a hydroxide ion and then this bonded in a date of covalent bond with the ammonia. So here water has accepted a proton in reaction one and in reaction two water has donated a proton and formed a hydroxide ion. So water is the amphalite and explain 
the answer by referring to the role of this substance in reaction 1 and reaction 2. So in reaction 1, water accepts a proton to form, spelt that wrong, let's just rub that out, to form H3O+. plus. Okay, in reaction two, water donates a proton. So here, if it's donating a proton, it's acting as an acid. And if it's accepting a proton, it's acting as a base. Okay, so that is the answer to that. Now let's go to the other piece of paper to look at this calculation over here. So we've got more space. It says to you 100 cubic centimeters, this is a volume of nitric acid with a concentration, this is a concentration, is diluted to 0 0.16 moles per cubic decimeter. Now it says calculate the volume of water that must be added to the nitric acid to dilute it. Okay, so you've got two options here. You can either find the moles of nitric acid here and say, okay, I've got this many moles in this volume. How much volume will I need for the second concentration? Or you can just remember the dilution formula, which is C1V1 equals C2V2. Now, this formula is very nice because it's a comparison formula. So you don't have to um, change your units to cubic decimeters. So this gives you 0, 0,2 times 100 is my initial concentration and my initial volume is going to be equal to 0 0.16 times my second volume. So if you pull out your calculator and you do some algebra with this, you will end up with 125 cubic centimeters. But now this is the total volume that you need to um, dilute it. But the question says that must be Added. So we started with 100 cubic centimeters and then we diluted it to this 125. So how much did we add? 125 minus 100 is 25 cubic centimeters. So 25 cubic centimeters of water must be added. Okay. Now it says to you, zinc oxide is insoluble in water and can be harmful to the environment. Nitric acid can be used to neutralize zinc oxide. The incomplete equation for the reaction is zinc oxide plus two nitric acid goes to a salt and water. So we're just going to quickly do 8.2.2. It says write down the name and the formula of the salt X that forms in the reaction. So obviously it's going to have a zinc cation and a nitrate anion. The zinc charge is 2 plus, the nitrate ion charge is 1 minus. So to make this balanced, you have to put a 2 over there, not to balance it, but to make it neutral, which it is. So the formula will be ZnNO3 twice. Okay, and we just use the charges to help us figure out how many nitrate ions we need. And we will call this zinc nitrate. So one mark for writing zinc nitrate and the other one for writing the formula. So let's go back to 8.2.1. Now it says to you, calculate the mass of zinc oxide that can be neutralized by 80 cubic centimeters of nitric acid with a concentration of 0 0.16 moles per cubic decimeter. So if we analyze this, we have a V of nitric acid, a volume of nitric acid, which is 80, which is going to be 80 times 10 to the negative 3 cubic decimeters, because we're going to need it in cubic decimeters, because of the concentration. The concentration of the nitric acid is 0 0.16 moles per cubic decimeters. So now if we know the concentration and the volume, this is the easiest thing to calculate in the question. The number of moles of nitric acid is going to be equal to the concentration times the volume. Remember, if you go to your data sheet, there's a formula C equals 
n over v. I've just rearranged this to say make uh, the number of moles the n, the subject of the formula. So please remember always label your calculations, put the thing you are looking for in the brackets next to the little n for the moles. So this is 0, 0,16 times 80 times 10 to the negative 3. Remember 1,000 cubic centimeters in a cubic decimeter. And we will end up with 0, 0,028 moles of nitric acid. Now, do not round off. Keep this number in your calculator. If you don't keep this number in your calculator, you will not get all of the marks. Okay, so we've done step one, find the moles. Step two is use the mole ratio. So the mole ratio, if we want to use the mole ratio, we need to look at the coefficients of the balanced equation. We are interested in the zinc oxide, because it says calculate the mass of zinc oxide, and we know something about the nitric acid. So we go one zinc oxide to two nitric acids. Remember we use the coefficient from the balanced equation to find the mole ratio. So we know we put in 0, 0,028 moles of nitric acid and then the ratio is 1 is to 2 so this side is the big number, this side is the small number so I'm going to say 0, 0,028 divided by 2 because that is my uh, ratio, 1 is to 2 and this is the small side, so we're going to divide by 2. And you end up, your calculator will tell you, 6,4 times 10 to the negative 3 moles of zinc oxide. So that's how many moles of zinc oxide that can be neutralized by the amount of nitric acid that we had. But it didn't ask you how many moles, it asked you the mass. So the next step is to convert moles to mass. So we're going to use the n equals little m over big M formula. But we are looking for little m. So the little mass of zinc oxide is going to be, by rearranging the formula, small n times big N. We've just calculated the number of moles, 6,4 times 10 to the negative 3. And then we need the molar mass for zinc. So zinc is 65. Okay. The mass of the big M of zinc oxide is going to be 65 for the zinc plus 16 for the oxygen is 81. So I'm going to multiply this by 81 and I will end up with 0, 0,5184 grams, which I can round to two decimal places as 0, 0,52 grams. Remember your unit. Okay. So, there we go. That question is finished.